couple different ways to find exponential functions. Um, first of all, <coughs> the example for today that you, that I asked you guys to look at yesterday. Does this, this example make sense? Okay. Because if you think about it, you're taking some initial amount and they're letting 1980 being the initial amount, okay? And it's growing at a certain rate, which I don't know. So starting, or growing, in this case it's decaying, okay? For 25 years to finally get down to 32.2. Okay, that is something that, um, that I think hopefully should make sense. And now this right here, um, you know, if we go ahead and would calculate this, that'll give us like 0 0.9 something, okay, 0 0.993, somewhere through there. Um, realize that that's what you're multiplying by to get it to decrease every day, okay. Um, I want to show you something that the book does. They make it a little bit different at times. And I want to at least prepare you guys for that. First of all, I'm going to start off with this. What if I have an exponential function that goes through the point, I don't know, I'm just going to make stuff up, 2, 7, and also goes through the point, oh, um, 9, oh, 13. Okay. How can I find an exponential function that would model that? Okay. Well, first of all, the first thing you've got to realize is on something like this, like the, um, like the chicken pox, do you think its decay is going to be exponential? I would say probably so. Okay. Because you have less cases, so then you don't have as many cases to infect other people. So then it's going to keep decaying and decaying and decaying, okay? That makes sense. In this one, I'm just telling you that, hey, we got an exponential growth function in some way, shape, or form, okay? Let me go ahead and <laughs> straighten this out. So, so how would we deal with something like this? Well, I can't just say 2 is my starting point, and I'm working and doing something for 7 years. I don't have any choice but to use my exponential function model. What can I do with the 2 and the 7? Put them in for x and y. Okay? And then I've got this other equation. 13 equals ab to the ninth. Okay. So now we've got this situation. So now we've got to think about how we're going to solve this system. We've solved systems in a bunch of different ways before. Like say if I have 2x plus 3y equals 10, 5x minus 2y is equal to 30, I just go ahead and eliminate, right? I go ahead and multiply the top by something, multiply the bottom by something, and combine my, combine my equations in some way, shape, or form to get something by, you know, uh, you just go down to one variable. Another thing I could do is I could do a substitution. I get y by itself, and then I could plug that in for the other y. I got two different methods, and each one of these will work. Okay? If I was going to do the substitution, what would you recommend solving for a or b? A. So a is um, 7 over b squared, and then when I put that in, look at what happens. It really works out pretty nice. Okay. And then we end up exactly the same spot as we started. We're starting at, this should be a, hold on. Okay, we're starting at a result of 7, and then we're going to multiply by something so many times to get up to 13. Well, how many times am I going to multiply by something? From 2 to 9, 7 times. Okay. Now, if that doesn't quite click with you, it's not something we have to really totally understand. Deeply conceptual, but it does help. So then you just divide by 7. And then we get... Um, 
this is just my 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 uh, growth factor or decay factor, and in that is my rate. Yep, you bet. So then I would just go ahead and take the seventh root of both sides. Go ahead and do that for me real quick. So I'm going to do this a little bit different way here in just a second. Okay, 1.09. Sure. 2.5. Okay, there we go. 1.0925. And from that, Gavin, you can tell it's a 9.25% growth. Okay. So, this is using a substitution method. Could we also do something like this and use an elimination method? We could. This is addition or subtraction. Here it's multiplication. So instead of add these together, what should we do with these? We're actually going to divide because then it'll cancel some, some things. So if I go over here to the side, I can go 13 equals AB to the ninth, divide this side by 7, divide this side by AB to the second, and then look at what I get. My A's are gone. I get 13 sevenths equals B to the seventh, and I'm right back to where I was. Okay? But the bottom line, it goes back to a, a solving philosophy of if when I have two variables, I've got to find some way to cancel one out. So I can divide, I can add, I can do this, that, and the other. Just that adding here would not cancel it out. Okay? Now, let me really blow your mind. The book sometimes doesn't do it this way. They go like this. They say, well, wait a minute. No, 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 no. Our exponential function has to be of this e raised to the bx. If it's going to grow continuously, we've got to use an e. So then they will just do kind of the same thing. They'll do 7 equals 7 equals a e to the 2x or e to the 2b. There you go. There you go. And our limit be 13 is equal to a times e to the 9b. And then from there, we can do it using either method again. We can use a substitution, or we can use a division. Which way do you want to do it? <laughs> yeah, thank you. 13 sevenths equals, and subtract my exponents e to the 7b okay well how do we find out what b is well I think they're totally out of order here oh yeah this is actually this book is really they they totally messed one thing up this to solve this we really can't do anything until we review logarithms okay so realize if they start, if they throw something like this at an answer, ours is going to look different because we're not quite there yet. Okay. So, um, and I'll talk about talk more about this when we get to logarithms. But let me just go ahead and rewrite this. Natural log of 13 sevenths equals 7 b. Divide by 7. Divide by 7. Because I do want to show you something. Calculate that for me, please. Natural log of 13 sevenths. And then divide it by 7. Is that right? Do you agree with that? Okay. So B equals point zero eight eight, huh? I'm not saying you're wrong, but now I've just got to, the direction I wanted to go, I've got to reevaluate here. Natural log of 7. Okay. Ok. 
Okay. Okay. So now what we'd have is we would have this equation y equals some a, which we haven't figured out yet, times e to the point 0, 8, 8x. How could we find my a? Yeah, we could just go ahead and plug it in up here somewhere. Okay. The one thing I don't like about this methodology is it gives us a little bit you know, it gives us a different answer than this. Here we can say that my my rate of my rate of growth is nine point two five percent. Okay, very easy to see. This one, in order to find my rate, I've actually got to take e to that number. And I actually I won't show you. I do get this one point zero nine two five. Okay? So realize that's something we'll be doing here in just a little bit. This form right here of this. Personally, I like working with that form better. I like working with it a lot better because I can see my, my starting point. I can see if it's bigger than one, it's growth. If it's less than one, it's decay. If we have this situation, y equals a times e to the bx, does anybody know what would make this growth and what would make that decay? My value of B, but what about it? What would make it grow and what would make it decay? Uh, it's going to have to do something. Um, what do you say, lower by one? Below or above one? Actually, that's the rules for this. The rules for this, if I go like E to the, even if I go E to the um, point 0.5, if I go E to the 0.5, I still get 1.6. Remember, E is a number, 2.7182, and that is already bigger than 1, and that's my base. My base is bigger than 1. How could I change this so instead of multiplying by something, I'm dividing by this instead? Negative. So if E is greater than 0, it's a growth. And if E is less than 0, it's a decay. So the rules are, you know, a little bit different. And bless you. For me, I really don't quite see B, uh, B I'm sorry. Yeah, because E is set. Okay. If B is positive, then it's a growth. And if uh, B is negative, it's decay. Which that should make sense because our PERT formula, if it's a growth, we'll put in a positive R. If it's a decay, we can actually put in a negative R. Okay. So anything from last night you want to take? You want to talk about from your assignment? Yep, because we've got phi or y equals 5 raised to the x. So how right now the x is a what number we're raising 5 to. I've got to modify my x before it actually does its job. Okay, so yeah, in this case, it would be translated 3 units left, so it would be a plus 3, and then a minus 4. So all those rules, I hop still, still, um, still hold true, uh, even on transcendental functions. What, how did you guys respond on number 33? Did you think it was good or not good? I thought it was not good. No. Okay. 6%? How would you come up with the 6%? Good. 0.4 raise a third. That's what I wanted you guys to come out of that problem with because you're killing 60%. You're killing 60%. So focus on what's going to stay living. So 0.4 raised to the third, which is about 0 0.06, 0 0.064. Okay. So there's going to be 6.4% uh, 6, um, 6 of the original still alive. 
Okay, so focus on that idea of way back in algebra one when we were talking about percent de a decrease and increase. If I'm decreasing the percentage by 60, I still have 40%. Okay, I'm getting rid of 60%, getting rid of 60%, getting rid of 60%. Now it makes me curious, how far would we have to go? Five treatments. Five treatments. Did it ask that? No. Okay, good. 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 A good natural curiosity. I like that. Okay. I need to spray around my place. I've kept up on bugs and stuff, but... Now it's the time to take care of dandelions and stuff, and I gotta get that done. But it's so windy. What am I going to do it? I see uh, you do 43, just like. Yeah. Um, How I would do 43? Oh, like on the um, on the exponential regression tool? Mm -hmm. Sure. Uh, did you get something that differed from theirs? Okay. So in this particular case, one thing you have to realize is they have given us some statistics. So I'm going to hit stat. And I'm going to edit those statistics. And I'm going to clear out what's there. And clear out what's there. Not delete it, clear it out. And then I'm just going to go ahead and put everything in for months 1, 7. Okay. And let's just go ahead and put in the rest. You could basically see it's going to be a doubling function from the 2, 4, 8, 16. So my guess is our base is going to be somewhere around 2. Okay. So then once it has that, you don't have to worry about your window. You don't have to worry about anything. Because if you don't want to see a graph, who cares? And now we're still working with statistic, stat, calc, exponential regression. And so how do you know that we found what we want? Look at my form. It's y equals a times b to the x, so that's exactly what we want. My a starts at 0.737. My b is 1.13. Yeah, and it's going to double, but it's doubling about every six days. Okay? Um, so, looks like it fits good. What's this R called again? It's correlation, correlation. Co coefficient, correlation, coefficient. The correlation coefficient is very close to one, so it looks like it's going to fit in very well. Okay? So. I gave you the multiple choice last night, and it also correct, or did I not? Okay. I lost my sheet. Oh, here it is. I don't even think I wrote it on this sheet. No, I did not. Gosh dang it. Nice. <coughs> okay. So. So before I forget. Yeah. Yes. Yep. Yep, because it's a horizontal reflection. I would have a negative x in my input. Maybe you guys do 45. Did I? I know. We're not done covering new information, but I at least want to make sure we do 45. 45 is a great problem, but it's, it's kind of a little bit depressing. I'm uh, talking about how much college is, and what, 60,000 is not close enough anymore. That's sad.
take a look at 3-2 a little bit today. Not going to get real deep in it. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna um, build onto that later. So that was just as much for my notes right now, and then we'll go back to it. Okay. So three two logarithms. Okay. From what we've done before, what's a log? A log is. Good. So I'm just going to quiz you. Log base 2 of 8. It's log base 2 of 8. Nope. Nope. 3. Okay. So when I say a log is an exponent, a log is equal to the exponent that takes me from 2 to 8. Okay? Or what John Baylor says is, okay, so we got a logarithm that is 2 to the third power is going to give me 8. Okay? So in a logarithm, we've got the log base b of a equals x. What that means is it means that b raised to the x is equal to a. Okay? And b is greater than 0. a is greater than 0. No negatives. Negatives aren't happening. Okay? So, log base 3 of 3. 1. 3 to the first equals 3. Okay? Log base 10 of 0 0.01. Negative 2. Good. Okay, because that's 1 1 one hundredth. Well, I got to square it and I got to flip it. I thought that one would cause you guys more trouble than that. Okay. Log base 5 of 1 fifth. Nope. Negative 1. 5 to the negative 1 gives me 1 fifth. Okay. Because it just flips it. Okay. So. Log. Um, of. 1,000. Okay. Nope. 3. Because my base is 10, right? So that's a common log. The common log has a base 10. So that'd be equal to 3. Okay? Let's keep going. Log. Oh, i got to think of some things that are going to challenge you a little bit more. Base 1 fourth of 16. 5? Negative 2? Nope. I agree it's got to be negative because we've got to flip it over. What? Negative 3. Nice job. No, I'm sorry. Did you say negative 2 before? Negative, it was negative 2. Negative 2 is correct. Because we've got to flip it and then we've got to cube, uh, squ <laughs> square it. i got that 3 in my head. I can't get rid of it. Okay? So bottom line, you're looking for what exponent it would take to get that done. Okay? So like you can hopefully see, and we're going to come back and practice this just a little bit more. Well, actually, let's do this right now. Log base 7 of 1. 0. Okay? Log base 7 of 0. Yeah, can't do it. Okay? We've already established that B's got to be greater than 0. A's got to be greater than 0 because 7, no matter what power I take 7 to, if 7, 7 to a positive number is going to get bigger. 7, 49, 343, da 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 Okay? But if I take it to a negative number, it's going to divide. So 7, 1 7, 1 49. It'll never get to 0, so it's not possible. Yeah? Why couldn't you have a log base negative 4 of 16? Um, why can't we? Well, it has to do with, okay, now, I've never been asked this question before, but I'm going to see if I can kind of think. This is a good little thought experiment for me, okay? So say if I've got log base 4, negative 4 of x, okay, let's just go of 
a equals n. I don't know. So that would tell me that negative 4 to the n is equal to a. Okay. My inverse function of that you're going to run into some problems here. Let's say if I have n be 0.5, it's going to give me the irrational or the imaginary thing. Because if I would go negative 4 to the 1 half, it would be the square root of that. You know what I mean? So it's just something that... So like there's some that work, it's just... Well, it just can't be negative because if I raise any negative number to like 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, it's going to give me not, not real. Okay? Um, just because you got to remember that if I take a negative to any power, and that power can be written as, like, say, negative 4 to the, uh, let's even do something different, uh, point, point 0.1, that'd be negative 4 to the 1 tenth, which that says you're going to take the tenth root of negative 4. Your calculator's going to go, dude, what's going on? Okay. Um, now, there are ways to deal with something like this. Like, say if we have a negative number, and we got to decide how is that going to grow. Well, what we'll do is we, like, say if I have something like this, y equals a times b to the x, I can put, I can make this number negative sometimes, and then it can still grow and shrink. And I don't have the problem with a negative as a base. Okay, good question. Good question. Okay. And how do you make it... Some calculators can change bases, but I never change bases. Um, you know, I, I never use my calculator to change bases. I just use what's called a change of base formula, which will be coming up. So, if I take the log base 2 of 7, that would be the log of any base 7 log of that same base 2, and you're going to have the same thing. But I would like to go ahead and reinforce that and prove that at some point in time, rather than just say, hey, remember that? Blah. Okay. Um, so, so anyway, with, um, with this and what we've talked about so far, I'm going to go ahead and kind of call this a day and then um, give you some things to think about. Okay. Um, so, here we go. 168, 46, 69, 76 through 79. And let's do 178. One through um, 25 odd. Now, you remember natural log? Is the common log? The base is e. If it's natural log, my base is e. So natural log of e squared would be? 2. two. It would just be 2. I don't have to write this e. It would just be 2. And you've got that button on your calculator. Natural log is just a log base e. Natural log is just a log base e. Just like common log is a log base 10. Okay? So let's do that. We'll call it good for today. Okay? Oh, it's nice having Mike on in that. Oh, yeah, Tom's gone too. So we get the double bonus today. I will. I'm going to give you guys candy bars today then. Since, since, since Tom's gone, I'll give you some food.